Hi guys, welcome back to another midweek trio. So you all seem to really enjoy last week's video and I really, really appreciate that. Um, it's basically a chance for us all to have a chat, uh, raise a topic for the week um, and answer three questions, hence the trio. So we answer three of your questions, go over a topic, it will change. It might be, maybe not even a topic, it might just be, I need some help guys with this car or we'll chat about that. But this week, as the title suggests, I'd like to discuss what your views are on MOT exemption. I will show you what my views are of it, and then I will tell you what the DirectGov website says about it, um, and see how you feel. I'd love to know your comments. Some people agree with it, some people don't. Um, some people have other views of it. Some people think it should be abolished. Some people think it's a great idea. What do you think? So let's get stuck into this video, guys. Remember, while I've got you, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you really want to, please consider joining and becoming a member. Right, let's get stuck into today's video. Right, so MOT exemption, today's topic. Basically, a vehicle can now have a tax and MOT exempt. So we're talking about the MOT side of things, so the safety side of things. On the website, it says a vehicle does not need an MOT if it was built and registered more than 40 years ago. So that basically means if you've got your classic car or vintage car, if you want to say it, you don't need to take it for its yearly test, for its yearly check over, if you so wish. You obviously can if you still want to, but you don't need to. But this is only applicable to vehicles that haven't had any substantial changes in the last 30 years. So it touches a little bit on the website about that. If you Google the um, MOT exemption, it, it brings up the same page that I've had a look at. The exceptions to this are heavy modifications, basically. So body off rest though. So like in America, they do loads of uh, body swap cars. So they put another shell, an older car over a new car. Um, Crown Vic swaps are quite quite good. Although I really love a Crown Victoria, so I don't know why you'd want to cut the body off it. But the platforms don't do really good. It's very hardy, very robust. As an example, that happens a lot in the States. Um, we don't have that here. We, we're not allowed to really do stuff like that without having an independent vehicle assessment, an IBA test on a vehicle, um, which you can do, it can pass. However, I believe now you have to have a Q plate. So if your vehicle's, to use an example of a tax exempt vehicle, if it's a 40 year old vehicle, you've driven around on it, you've got your original engine, your original suspension, you're driving around, you're like, la, 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 la. Oh, I really fancy doing an engine swap or a chassis swap. I'll cut the bottom out, it's rotten anyway. I'll stick that under it. Technically, that vehicle is now not taxed or MOT exempt. I believe you pay the taxation class on whatever CC engine you put in. And I believe you then have to have a vehicle assessment and your vehicle will end up on a Q plate. That's my understanding for reading between the lines. And that's my understanding from people that build kit cars and stuff like that that I know of. Basically, you can, if you like the Volvo Amazon, going back to completely original, I can choose if I want to have that. MOT or to, uh, MOT exempt. So I can MOT every year if I want to, if I fancy it needs to check over, I want a pair of eyes on it, or I can look after it myself and I just keep on top of it. The stipulation is, is if you get caught with it and the vehicle's dangerous or causes an accident or you have an accident because your vehicle's dangerous, it's a two and a half thousand pound fine by the government. Also, you can get points in your license for each point the vehicle is damaged or not fit for a road. So they're letting you have your vehicle tax exempt, MOT exempt, but there's a big, big but. You have to look after your vehicle. You really do have to care for it and keep on top of it. So what are my views? So my views are, I think it's okay for me, my, me personally, my personal circumstances. So I only have a few vehicles that are MOT tax exempt. Um, the Volvo Amazon, the 72 Clubman Estate, the T2 van actually is MOT tax exempt. And behind us, the old minivan is now past its 40 years. When I apply for the logbook and put it into historic, it is now MOT tax exempt. So I have four, quite fortunate like that, really. Quite, I say that quite a lot. Yeah, four vehicles that are MOT tax exempt. I'm okay with it in the sense that basically everything you see me do with cars, I film for you guys. I'm not hiding anything to the world. I wouldn't drive a car. I wouldn't put anyone, in, a friend in a car, let them take them as a passenger, let my wife drive a car. Um, put future kids in the cars, if I seemed it to be unfit for the road or dangerous, I wouldn't drive a car that's dangerous. I've been in vehicles where suspension's failed, where brakes have failed. Um, I've been in cars where you can see through the floors in mate's cars and you're like, come on, pal, you need to sort this out. I don't agree with an, uh, an unfit for the road car 
to the point that I've missed out on quite a few events where I'm just, I don't feel confident in it. It needs to be right, it needs to be fixed. Don't get me wrong, I have been bitten a few times where you've done all your due diligence, you've had it checked. I've had a legitimate MOT and actually broken a suspension component on the way down the road. Broken, so not poorly fitted, a component has failed. And that was on a classic mini many years ago. Um, so that happens at the end of the day, your vehicle could be MOT checked and it'd be a problem. My view of it is, like I say, I film it for you guys so you don't really miss out on anything. So you see what I do and I don't do on vehicles. I wouldn't drive because they're unsafe. And also mine don't do that much mileage. Um, now you could argue that's not good for a car, but in a sense, they don't do much mileage. If they get used, they still turn over and drive, but I don't do massive, massive mileage. I don't rely on them daily. I don't treat them or abuse them. I am not one of them. Anyone that knows me, me and Matt have just had this conversation while fixing the Volvo for its MOT, the 940. Um, I like an estate, I like a van, I like a pickup. I like a car that's essentially quite boring to people. Um, not really a fast car. I'm not really into anything like that. So it, I don't think, for me, I don't abuse my cars is what I'm trying to get at. They get used but they don't get abused. Um, the classic mini sidewalk for argument's sake, that still needs an MOT, it's a 95 car. That does my most mileage, I guess, with my classic car fleet. Um, but again, it, it, if it needs anything, it gets worked on, it gets fixed, it gets sorted. So the long and short of it for me, I'm happy with it. I keep them top of my cars. If anything gets, needs fixing, it gets fixed. I've got mini mine on my side. If I need a part overnight, I don't feel happy with driving a car to a show, get it ordered in the week, fit it at the weekend, off you pop. I think it's a good thing. I think that for a classic vehicle that doesn't see the road very much, doesn't produce much emissions because it's not on the road very much, I think you should be allowed that option. And it's all about the option because the um, Amazon, when it's done, I'll RMIT it. It's not been on the road since 1978. I feel like it needs to pop onto the database again, prove it's safe, and then I might not MOT it for a few years because it might not do much mileage. It might be broken. <laughs> Who knows? I agree with it. I think it's a good thing, but I don't agree with the people that take it to the extreme. So I know of many cars that are heavily, heavily modified. They should not be MOT tax exempt. I understand you should do what you want with your car, but you also should follow the rules. We don't live in the States where rules are a lot more relaxed. Um, we do have to look after them. At the end of the day, don't be selfish. If you want your modified car, think about someone else. If you hit someone or hurt someone or you fail on the motorway and end up sliding across the motorway and taking four cars out, that's on you. So just bear that in mind, guys. I'm with the DVA on that. I feel like you should be punished heavily for having an unruly legal car. I, mean, I agree with it. I keep my cars looking tip top. Yeah, they might look a bit tatty, a bit patchwork quilt with the paint, 72 Clubman, but they're solid and I am confident they would pass the test if they ever needed to go for a test. Right, on to listeners' questions. Let's start the trio. And we're back again with another brew. So I still love this mug. So, your questions, guys. Let's get stuck into them, shall we? Right. Like I say, it's a trio. Pick three questions from you guys. If you've got a question you'd like to ask me, either contact me on Instagram, contact me via email, everything's in the description below, or just comment on this video, and I will pick them up, and I collate them, and I pick three for the week that I feel like are a bit of a mix bag, and we can chat through them. So, we're going to start off with a question. I'm going to read them off to you. A question from John Parry. So, where do you find the motivation and what events have you got lined up? So there's two questions in there, so a bit tricky that. But I will answer them quite quickly. So where do I find the motivation? You guys, it's the short, long short of it. I do this channel because I love classic cars and I love owning them and striving to have the vehicles I want. Um, and I enjoy the challenge of taking something that's a load of rubbish and making it something nice. Admittedly, it looks like we're trundling along quite slow with some projects, but that is purely because life is very, very busy. So motivation wise, it is you guys. It is knowing that I need, in my head anyway, two, three videos out a week. I want to smash the videos. I want to bring you guys content and I want it to be a bit of a mixed bag at the same time. So for me, you guys are the motivation. Um, event wise, I'll, I'll chuck that on the end. So kind of getting two here, like I say, two for the price of one. Event wise, it's quite hard really to tell at the moment. It depends what cars are on the road. Um, definitely doing Himley Hall. Um, we're taking our 72 Club on the state and we're going to be teamed up with Mini Mine once again and parked with them. So massive thank you to British Mini Club for making that happen. Um, we'll be there. We'll have the banner up and stuff like that. I might bring some merch that I've got with me. So please come say hi. Um, we're also going to do, hopefully, 
if you've not seen the VWT2 series, it's not going very well at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to do the Classic Mini and Bus event. I think which is later on in the year, it's July time. Um, we're going to take the bus to that, change of flavour. So hopefully that can be that. Uh, I'm going to do the Goodwood Revival, hopefully. Um, talking to Goodwood, we're actually, when this video is being filmed, we, live, we are on our way to the uh, members meeting at Goodwood. I am a fellow of the Goodwood and we're going to the members meeting, which I'm really, really excited about. So I will try and get some footage on that for you guys. Um, I want to do the NEC again. I'd love to be on display in the NEC, but I just don't know how I can make that work yet. Stands are incredibly expensive, but maybe I could team up with a club event or something like that. I've got Volvos, I've got Volkswagen now, and I've got the Mini, so I could put a car in any stand really. But well, the, the, the goal is to have a stand one day at NEC, and you guys, I know, will help me make that happen. So yeah, that's just a few of them really. All the classic car events locally to me. So I live in the north north of England um, near Manchester. So there's Cape Swan Hall Classic Car Show, Tatton Park, Volkswagen Show, American Show, loads going on at Tatton Park. So we will cover quite a few events, I hope. I'm really into the mixed events at the moment. I think it's a really nice variation of cars and you don't get bored. So thank you very much for your question, buddy. Thank you very much for watching the channel. The next question is from John Daly. Now, John Daly is a massive follower of this channel. Um, we chat pretty much daily. Um, and honestly, <laughs> some of the motivation you give me is absolutely spot on, buddy. Um, I really appreciate all your support and all your love from all the way over in Ireland. So thank you very much. So John's question is, do I find it hard going between so many projects? Yes, sometimes. Um, but for me, and the reason why I do this is so I can create playlists to create content on that's in loads of different sections. Um, and that's why I've got the barn and that's why I do this. And also financially. So if you're waiting for part on one car, you can jump onto the next. Um, it's quite hard sometimes to jump off a car and go onto another because you're obviously waiting for something, but also you need to. And I feel like, especially with classic minis, um, I do a lot of them and you can get not bored of them, but you're doing the same repairs over and over again, so I don't want you guys to be bored. So that's why I have the variation of it as well. Filming of it isn't particularly hard because I just pick a car, right, I'm cutting enough down the workshop, I'm gonna work on the Amazon today and I will find a job to do on the Amazon. Um, James's Mini is obviously James's Mini, it's not mine. So I have to wait for him to financially fund that vehicle. Um, Matt's Mini will be a little bit the same. However, the difference is with me and Matt is we live close to each other um, and we can smash out the rest of the Mod Cooper, which you guys seem to really, really love. And I'm very excited for it because anyone that knows me knows I like the almost the low base model vehicles. I like a quite mundane car in, in this grand scheme of things. Like the Amazon is just a Volvo Amazon with a beautiful red leather. Um, the Volvo 940 is a boxy old Volvo. I like minis, if you've probably noticed, Violet is just blue, not many bolt on bits. I just like a basic vehicle. Um, so Matt's vehicle, motivational wise, and to jump between is gonna be quite fun because I know it's gonna be something very different for you guys. Um, it's gonna be not heavily modified, but very different to my taste. And from knowing Matt for so long and how much he helps out on the channel and then behind the scenes, I really wanna create his mini for him. I wanna create his dream car. Um, it's a very different flavor to what the channel's seen before. I know the plans he's got for it and I know full well that it's gonna be very, very good. So jumping between projects, yes, can, can be hard, John, uh, but it does also keep your mind clear and your brain clear. And I guess I'm very fortunate. I pay a lot for it. <laughs> I have space to do that, which is very, very helpful. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your question, buddy. And thank you for supporting the channel. The next question is kind of two into one. It's about food. <laughs> so let's change it up again, shall we? This is from a good friend called Jackman. So you've not seen Jackman on the channel, but I bought the 940 off Jackman. Again, a massive follower of the channel, big support of the channel, and one of my best mates. So I will always go to the ends of earth to look after Jackman and help him out with his cars. But we don't film it because it's at his house and it's a bit different. However, he's got some quite cool cars, two, actually three of which, two definitely, but one of them will also come to the channel at some point. So, Jackman, thank you much for your, for your question. Jackman's questions, like I say, they're in the same kind of area. So, what do you eat when you go to Greg's? Oh, it depends if it's lunchtime or breakfast, doesn't it? So, breakfast, got to be a baguette, sausage and bacon. Don't really do their egg, it's a bit weird. I've got a trusted egg. Sausage and bacon, with, depending on the mood, probably brown sauce or maybe both, red and brown, a bit on each side. That's what I have for breakfast. If I was going for lunch, Either it's gotta be a steak bake, hasn't it? Probably, and a sausage roll. So the other question is, best biscuits to dunk? So we're talking in the workshop. I haven't got any biscuits. 
I don't have any biscuits in here. But if I was to dunk, for me, the best biscuits to dunk are hobnobs or bourbons. They hold the, the brew nicely, and I think they give a nice, nice taste to the drink after that. So that's, <laughs> that's that one answer for you there, buddy. Thank you very much for your question. So remember to subscribe to the channel, guys. Next week, we'll see what we cover next week. We might actually cover maybe one of the cars as a topic instead, and maybe run through some ideas for you guys, see if you can help out. We'll see what comes up, see what happens in the motoring world, shall we? But I thought I'd cover MAT exemption of our topic this week because it's something that gets talked about every day. I hear about it on social media all the time, and people like it agree with it or don't agree with it. So please just comment away what your views are of it in there. Also, if you've got a question for me, drop it in the comments below and we'll hopefully cover it next week. People that have sent me questions, I haven't forgotten. I've got a big, big list. I'm just picking three random ones at a go. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Go and check out both our sponsors. We have Frost and Mini Mine. There's a discount code on the screen for Mini Mine now. That is there. And then we've got a discount code in the description for Frost. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your week. Catch you later, guys.